the humble Q-snap. A few flimsy pieces of plastic that the entire stitching community talks about as if it is the solution to all of life's problems. But are they really that good? I recently bought my very first Q-snap, and as a beginner to using it, I had some questions and problems that I don't see talked about very much. So I figured that would make a good video. For those who don't know me, hello, my name is Michelle. I am a proud multi-crafter who loves to make all of the things and encourage you to do the same. I know some of you out there are very new to stitching, so I hope this can answer all the questions you didn't even know you had about Q-snaps. For those of you who are more experienced and already know what's what, well, you do me a favour and watch this video anyway, okay? Deal. First things first, what on earth is a Q-snap? Well, if you are pretty new to needlework or you've been stitching under a rock somewhere, you might never have seen these things. It's basically a series of plastic pipes that fit together to form a frame, some snapping clips to go on top, and your fabric fits between the two. This serves much the same purpose as a hoop or a scroll frame, but it solves some of the problems with each of those. Ultimately, like most things in this hobby, which is best for you just comes down to personal preference. One thing you will notice on a proper branded Q-snap is that the clips have these ridges inside. The idea there is to more firmly hold your fabric and give it that drum tight surface that a lot of stitchers love. There are very similar looking off-brand frames available and I've not personally tried them. However, I have heard that many of them have smooth clamps without the ridges and they don't hold the fabric anywhere near as tight. Your mileage may vary, but don't say you weren't warned. All right, so you're thinking of getting into Q-snaps, but there are so many sizes. How on earth do you pick the right one for you? This is my only Q-snap so far, and it's eight inches square. This is working well for me, and I'm happy with the choice, but again, it is personal preference. The first thing to consider is how large your usual projects are and what count you like to work on. If you're working at 14 count and you're stitching up something that will end up three feet long, having a small working space like this will probably drive you mad since you'll need to move the frame so often. In my case, my project is about 13 inches long, but I'm working over one on 28 count, so I as you can see, that is a while of stitching before I'll need to move the frame. Another consideration is how you'll be holding the frame. I hold mine in hand, so I wanted something as small as possible that wouldn't feel like a faff to hold and manoeuvre. You might be planning to clamp it onto a floor stand or similar, in which case that's not so much of a concern and you might want to prioritise a bigger working area. Do bear in mind as well that you need enough fabric for the clamps to hold onto, so the smaller the piece of fabric you are using, the smaller the Q-snap you would need. And finally, do you stitch cross country? If so, again, you will probably want to prioritize a larger working area so you can cover more ground at once. Eight by eight inches appears to be the most popular size for a first purchase, followed by 11 by 11. You can buy separate extension bars, multi-packs of different sizes, and you can even mix and match pieces from your existing frames to make your own custom sizes, as long as they are the officially branded Q-snaps. All right, enough theory, let's actually build a Q-snap. Obviously, this one is square, so all the pieces are the same, but it's nice and straightforward regardless of which one you have. You'll have four pieces to your frame, just push them together firmly to create two halves like so, and then push those two halves together to complete the frame. That is literally it. Now it's time to attach your fabric, and this is where for me, as a brand new Q-Snap user, things got a little bit scary. I was convinced the fabric was going to stretch or tear or something, so first of all, if that's what you are currently thinking, don't worry, I'm with you. It's totally normal. If you are really concerned, you can always practice on some old scrap fabric, even an old t-shirt or something, just until you get the hang of it. I'm not gonna judge. One of the things that tutorials never seem to mention for some reason is that you can do this next part in two different ways, each with their pros and cons. So I'll show you the usual way first. Take your frame, lie it on a nice flat surface, now drape your fabric over the top. You can see here I already have stitches in this project and they are facing towards me. You'll just be pushing the snap clamps on there carefully but firmly. I like to do it by attaching opposite clamps first like this, but whether it actually makes any difference or not, I couldn't really tell you. And now another thing that never seems to be mentioned in tutorials, most of the time people will tell you to snap on your clamps and then twist them towards the outside of the frame to tighten your fabric. However, 
If you have a brand new Q-snap like this, you might find that it's actually already very tight. This is because the clamps naturally loosen up over time and not because you've done anything wrong. Do not panic. If there is some slack in the fabric, you can go ahead and twist the clamps like this to tighten it up. Easy. So this is the most common thing you'll see with Q-snaps. The clamps are kind of round the side and the fabric is close to the top of the frame as we're looking down on it. If that makes no sense, bear with me one second while I switch to the other way around. This time I'm draping the fabric with the stitches facing down and clamping from the back. As you can see when we look back at the front of the work, the fabric is now much further down inside the frame. Apparently this is called stitching in the well, so thank you to On Point Stitcher for that little tidbit there. Personal preference, neither of these ways is more correct than the other. Just try them both and see. We've already briefly mentioned adjusting the tension by twisting the snap clamps. However, if you've owned your Q-snap for a while, the clamps do have a tendency to loosen up a lot. One popular fix for this is to add a small amount of fabric, such as felt, in between the fabric and the clamp, as you can see here. Another fix, which I haven't had a chance to try, but I've read it in multiple places, is to heat the clamps. Some people run them through a cycle on their dishwasher, others just stick them in a pan of boiling water, but apparently, once they cool back down, they tighten right back up. Again, not something I've personally tried, so I can't actually vouch for it, but maybe someone more experienced can weigh in down in the comments. If you're finding this video helpful so far, please do leave me a thumbs up, as it'll help us find other new Q-snappers in need. And consider subscribing if you'd like to see more content like this, occasional free patterns, and a lot of relatable awkwardness. Onward! Now, one of my biggest worries, and apparently quite a common one if Reddit is anything to go by, is that the Q-snap is going to damage the fabric, the stitches, or both. So let's tackle that one now. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's absolutely impossible to ruin your fabric with a Q-snap, because that is just not true. In fact, the very first time I tried to remove the clamps from this relatively delicate even weave, the corner of the clamp snagged, and if I hadn't been going so slowly and carefully, that might have been a total disaster. So that's tip one. Be very careful until you know what you're doing, especially if your clamps are brand new and super tight. We just mentioned this in the tension section, but adding something like this felt gives a lot of peace of mind. It protects the fabric, prevents snagging on stitches once you reach the point of having those under the clamp, and it also makes the clamps easier to remove. With looser clamps, you can carefully slide them off your work to remove, but when they're this new and tight, it's actually quite difficult. Adding felt here means I can just grab that and pop them off. Simple as that. If you are sliding to remove your clamps, just be sure that they're rolled far enough to the outside of your frame, and go easy so as to not snag any fabric in the corners. In terms of stretching the fabric and ruining the whole piece, this was my main worry after seeing how tight the tension was. Apparently this is not really a thing. Recommendations do vary from twisting the clamps inwards, to loosen the fabric when you're not stitching on it, to removing the piece from the frame entirely, to just leaving it in there for months and not caring about it, and then washing it to get the creases out once you're finished. Obviously I expect this does vary a bit depending on how delicate your fabric is, so if you are the better safe than sorry type, just take it out of the frame when you're finished with it, same as you might do with a hoop. No biggie. And just one more shout out for these felt inserts, because they help to avoid stretching the fabric under the clamps too. Not bad for 50 pence up boys. So we have our project nice and tight in the frame, we've got our safety felt doing a great job under the clamps, but um, what about all this other nonsense over here? There are a few ways to handle excess fabric, so it'll be yet another case of whatever you prefer. A lot of people use magnetic cable ties or similar. Roll up the excess and just attach it to the side of the frame like so. Bonus of this method, you can use the magnetic cable tie as a needle minder. Others use something called spool huggers, which I had literally never even heard of before researching this video. But they look like they might be a little bit more secure than these cheapo magnets, so I'll probably try them at some point soon. One very popular Q-snap accessory is a grime guard. Basically an elasticated cozy for your frame with the primary purpose of keeping your fabric clean and protecting from all of those nasty oils on your hands. But they're also very handy for holding rolled up excess fabric. This is definitely something I want to try and I'll be attempting to sew one for myself at some point, but I have to wonder how much of the working area would get covered up as a downside. Guess we'll find out soon. 
I think that just about covers everything that I wanted to know as a newbie to the world of Q-Snaps, but if you do have more questions, please leave them in the comments and I will either let you know the answer, or I'll go and grab a grown-up who knows more about these things than I do. Ultimately, I am very much enjoying my new frame, especially using it with even weave, which for want of a better term is kind of a floppy fabric. But it took a bit of getting used to, and of course, an extra few pence investment on felt. That's it from me today, I hope someone out there found it helpful. I'll be back soon with some more crafty nonsense, so in the meantime, have a brilliant rest of your day, and keep making cool stuff. Bye!